And this is the basic idea. We've said in the past that we really can't tell the difference, at least by looking at the magnetic fields, between a positive charge moving to the right or a negative charge moving to the left. So for example, if I have a wire, and in our model of a metal, we have mobile electrons inside the wire. And let's say the conventional current is running this way, capitalized going that way. So electrons would be moving. The electron current would be what direction? Other way. Okay, so little i is going that way. So we have electrons moving that way. And we could say, well, the magnetic field of one of these moving electrons is going to be at a location, say, above the wire. Uh, well, we have V. We have our R vector pointing up here. So remember that magnetic field due to a moving charge particle is mu naught over 4 pi. QV cross R hat over R squared. So we say, okay, V is pointing that way. Cross R is up. Thumb points in, but it's negative, right? So the magnetic field is going to be pointing out, okay? So a negatively charged particle moving to the left makes a magnetic field pointing out at this location, okay? Well, we know from our model of metals that the electrons are the things that should be moving, but, and this is where the idea of conventional current comes in, we could, in principle, have positive charges moving in the other direction, right? If, in fact, the mobile charges were positive, then we say V cross R, thumb points out, but you multiply by a positive charge, your thumb still points out, so I can't tell the difference, right? At that, by looking at the magnetic field, negative charge is moving one way or positive charge is moving the other will give me the same direction of magnetic field, which is why we can just define conventional current and not have to usually off, or oftentimes worry about the direction of the electron current. The Hall effect is a situation where we can, in fact, tell the difference between positives moving one way or negatives moving another, okay? And it has to do with running a current through a wire in the presence of a magnetic field, okay? So let's look at a situation. Let's say we have a series of questions here, which we're going to go through step by step. Let's say we have a circuit here, just a battery connected to a wire, connected to some bar of unknown material, okay? We're kind of drawing this in, in sort of an exaggerated way just so we're able to show what's going on inside of it, but it's basically just a circuit, okay? We've got a magnetic field applied uh, in the presence of this bar because there's a bar magnet over here, okay? So we have the north pole here, which means we're going to have a magnetic field pointing, if I were looking at locations here, magnetic field would be pointing what direction? That way, right? Away from the, away from the north pole. So we have a battery connected to a uh, bar in the presence of a magnetic field. And the first thing we want to think about is the direction of the electric field inside the bar. Now, I'm going to label this thing, this electric field, E parallel. What does that mean? Well, E parallel is the electric field inside the wire, or electric field component inside the wire, it might be a better name for it, that is parallel to the conventional current. Now, we'll, we're, so we're labeling this because we're going to make a distinction between this and another type of electric field later on. Okay. But for right now, this is just the electric field that is set up in the circuit due to the battery and due to any surface charge gradients, for example. So if we have this battery hooked up in this way, if we're looking at an observation location inside this bar, what's the direction of E parallel? So question number one, what's the direction of E parallel? Okay, well, it's just going to be in the negative y direction, right? And a couple people are maybe thinking about the direction of electron current. But remember, if we have electrons, electron current would be moving what way here? Up, right? If, if we do have mobile electrons here, little i is moving up. The electric field, though, is based on the signs of the uh, 
the battery. So electric field points away from the positively charged terminal of the battery and towards the negatively charged terminal. Of course, there's a surface charge gradient on here that's going to cause the electric field to follow the wire. But inside this bar of material here, we're going to have the electric field pointing down. And I'm going to call that electric field. Let me draw it uh, over here. I'll call that E parallel. Okay. So it's in the direction of conventional current, but opposite the direction of electron current. Right? We've seen this field before. This is nothing more than the field inside a circuit. Okay? Everybody okay there? Not as most people got it, but okay. All right. So we now have. Electric field pointing downward. We say that the mobile charges are negative. Well, we just answered this question, but let's pull it anyway. What is the direction of the motion of these negative charges inside the bar? So, are you awake is this question. Okay. Still only 90%, which is kind of interesting. But we, uh, we know that the, if there's electrons, if these mobile electrons are negative, as they have typically been for us, then the electric field is down. There's going to be a force upward on them, driving them through, and the velocity will be upward. Okay, fine. Now, these charges are moving in the presence of a magnetic field, though. Here's the bar magnet, and the bar magnet is making a magnetic field in this region pointing to the right. What's going to be the direction of the magnetic force on one of these moving negatively charged electrons? Just the magnetic force. Just the force, the magnetic force due to this magnetic field. Okay, 75% of us are saying answer five positive z direction, right? Because we have velocity upward, v cross B is negative, but it's on a negative charge, right? So you've got to flip the direction. So there's going to be a magnetic force on this neg moving negative charge that's out towards us. And let me draw this, uh, let's see, let me draw the negative charge here so I can kind of show the forces a little bit more clearly. We have a magnetic force outward. So this is the magnetic force that's pointing in the plus z direction. So we're sort of thinking about an initial transient, right? Well, I mean, eventually there's going to be a steady state reach. But initially, if you think about in the first instant, these negative charges are moving upward. There's a magnetic force out towards us. So if there's a magnetic force out towards us, what's going to happen to the negative charges? They're going to cur yeah, curve outward, aren't they? Well. Moving charge, negative charges kind of curve outward until what? Well, okay, they, will they circle? Well, their speeds are probably not high enough for them to circle. And in fact, there's still this driving force in the positive y direction, right? So we're probably not going to get them to just spin around in a circle. But what could happen? Say again? What do you mean? Okay, well, they can collect here, but of course there's still negative charges moving here, right? So they could, these will still be affected, and they'll deflect. And ones down here will be deflected, and ones down here will be deflected. So not just uh, in, the, in the top part, but so entirely on, not on, in fact, well, this is a 3D picture, right? So we're looking at not at the right side, but what's going to happen? Is it? Which side is going to build up a charge? The front side is going to build up a charge, right? Think about this throughout, right? We've got a, a negative charge here, for example. I'm, draw, I'm trying to draw the forces in perspective, which is a little tough, right? But the force is basically out towards us, right? That's the way you got to visualize this. So if this negative charge it, uh, it feels a force out towards us, then it's going to be deflected out. On the front side, we're going to build up negative charge. What's that mean on the back? You're going to be able to positive charge, right? Conservation of charge, so we can't have charge coming from nowhere. 
So essentially, it's like the entire electron sh C has shifted a little bit due to this magnetic force. But what happens then? Does this keep going on forever? We keep building up. Why not? What happens? Oh, okay. So we ha now have an electric field due to this polarization, right? We have positive surface charge on the back, negative surface charge on the front. So what's going to be the direction of the electric field due to that polarization inside the block? Out towards us. Out towards us. From pointing from positive, uh, positive to negative. I'm going to call that component of the electric field E perpendicular. Okay? And that essentially is what we mean by the Hall effect. In fact, this, this E perpendicular here, we could measure a potential difference across here. This potential difference perpendicular to the current, the flow of current, is called the Hall effect voltage. So the Hall effect, when we mean the Hall effect, we mean this potential difference that you get not along the direction of current, but perpendicular to the direction of current that's created by this polarization. The polarization is in turn created by the moving charges in the magnetic field. Okay? When does the polarization stop? It keeps building up until what? Okay, when the, we have the force, we're going to have a force on this electron, right? That's due to this perpendicular electric field. It's going to be in what direction? Kind of into, right? Into the board, right? So this is going to be, call it F E perpendicular. That's in the negative Z direction here. And we reach a steady state when what? When those two forces are equal, right? Just like in the velocity selector, we have a, a charge moving perpendicular to two. Again, I'm kind of drawing this in perspective. So the way to think about this is positive, or excuse me, the uh, magnetic force coming out, electric force going in. Okay. So we have the electric force then balancing magnetic force, and we get. Uh, a steady state, and so the charges will now just travel through undeflected, right, in a constant speed in a constant direction, okay? So this, this, again, this is one of these transient situations that happens really, really quickly, but once you reach this steady state, we know that the end result has to be this type of polarization to give us that electric force to balance the magnetic force so that it travels through undeflected, okay? Everybody okay here? Questions here? So given this, let's say we connect a voltmeter across the bar. And I'm connecting the voltmeter not across the ends. Okay, I'm not connecting it from this end to this end. I'm connecting it transverse or perpendicular to the current in the bar. And I've hooked up the voltmeter Voltmeters have a positive and negative terminal. And I'm hooking up the positive terminal to the front and the negative terminal to the back. Okay. The rule for voltmeters is that it's the, the reader, excuse me, the meter will read positive if the positive lead is connected to the higher potential location. 